Hey, this is Dr. Rick. I'm talking to you about BMI, body mass index. Those of you who have seen me in the clinic, you know that part of the vital signs that we measure are temperature, respiratory rate, pulse rate, blood pressure. We do BMI. We happen to have a weight loss uh, center associated with us. Uh, Tom Jordan is the director of the wellness clinic. But really, uh, all your doctors out there should be checking your BMI and telling you that this is what you are. Somebody had come up with the formulation of the BMI because the old way wasn't working. We could tell people until the docs were blue in the face that this is your number, where you are on the scale. This is, everybody knows this kind of scale because we've been brought up with these scales. They're the most accurate. The digitals aren't as accurate. I don't care what the digital company says. This is the most accurate. And all of us know about that sound of the slide going, and you know, there's all these anticipation, oh, am I better or worse? Am I the same? So sometimes we get used to the numbers. And even if we did have a range of numbers, uh, American society, one in three Americans is obese. So this isn't working this is not, as far as making a visual for what's normal, what's not normal, what's your normal. This isn't working. Uh, telling people that overweight is bad, that's not working either. So hopefully in this last 10 years, the concept of BMI is transferring over to other doctors so that they can make you aware that this is where you are danger, in danger of having problems associated with high body weight. Those problems are high cholesterol, elevated blood pressure, and glucose problems like diabetes. You can certainly have a little bit of each, a borderline problem, a, with blood pressure, borderline problem with uh, cholesterol, a borderline problem with diabetes, but you know that borderline problems always go off the board. So that's a problem in, it, in the fact that if we just watch it, what do you expect is going to happen? It's not going to change if you're not going to change yourself. So again, BMI gives you a better, better visualization of where you are, where you should be. And a lot of my patients will say, well, I was never that kind of weight. If um, a guy that's 5'6 is supposed to be 110 to 120 pounds, uh, some of my patients will look at me funny and say that, impossible, I was never even that way in high school. Well, it's not an absolute, it's an ideal for where you should be. It's either that, and by change that with regards to diet, lifestyle modifications, uh, exercise, or we give you prescription medicines, it's as easy as that. Uh, the easy way out is prescription medicines. Uh, I can easily just hand you a prescription, be done with it, say the side effects of the prescriptions and say good luck, I'll see you in three months. But that's not what making lifestyle change is. That's just continuing on bad habits and throwing a pill on top of that. So my suggestion with all my patients is try, try to change things before I have to give you pills. If you're in danger, I will give prescription medicines, but if we have some time to make the change and we have the right folks to make the change, then it's worth it to change that BMI. Because it's a concept, but it's a concept of measuring weight and knowing the ideal of weight. But it's just a reminder that there's something that you're doing that isn't healthy. So sometimes you have to be pushed to be reminded. We have, I have patients all the time saying, well, you know, I just watch my blood pressure. I know what to do as far as diet. I know what I have to do as far as exercise. But then they come back in about a year and at the same place. Oh, I did great after three months, but yeah. sustainable lifestyle changes is what I'm trying to get at. If you're going to make a change, don't go back to the old ways. Everybody knows about simple and complex carbohydrates, and that's, that's, that's old. You have to know about the complexity of food. The food industry hires very bright scientists to make their food the tastiest and to make people buy their food. So who do you have to fight and go against the scientists that the food company hired? You have the internet and you have your own reading. Hopefully you're all intelligent, but you have to arm yourself with as much knowledge as possible to make a sustainable change because there's a lot of temptation out there in every TV or internet um, program that you watch, there's always going to be an advertisement. It's either going to be a food or some form of drug. So you have to be wary of that. You have to be um, wary of the side effects of food. Food has emotion. I'll do another tutorial about the effects of food soon. Read that, please. 
but food will cause emotion, food will make you hungry. The downside of food, especially glycemic index, which you should all know about, glycemic index is actually an old concept, but more people are starting to realize it just to understand that concept of how food gets digested. There are certain foods that evaporate in your bloodstream and go straight to high fructose or high sugars. There are certain foods like whole foods that slowly get absorbed. It makes the gut work a little bit. They slowly release sugar so that the, the, the organs don't get bathed in a, in a tidal wave of hormones and sugar. They get a little bit at a time. That's the way the gut's supposed to work. It's the way the body's supposed to interpret the energy from the food. But unfortunately, things like Red Bull, um, processed food from McDonald's, they're made to give you uh, sugar from candy. They're made to give you sustainable, or sorry, non-sustainable highs real quick but they also drop you down low so that you'll search for more in about half an hour. It's called a food crash. So um, the symptoms that kids sometimes have after lunch if they all go to McDonald's is they get lethargic, they get irritable, uh, and then they pump up again before they play sports after they're um, released from school. So you have to know the ins and outs of food. And if you're doing it on your own or you're trying to read on the internet, I honor that, but might as well get somebody to help you. And we have registered dietitians and exercise physiologists who study this stuff, they go to school for this stuff, utilize them. We have two in our clinic because we're lucky enough, but you kind of have to do the research. If you rely on your prescription or your insurance, your insurance will pay for me to give you a prescription after the disease comes up. Your insurance will not allow me to get you to lose weight, get a healthy lifestyle and make changes. It takes too much time. And in the office, insurance says time is very expensive so they will not let me spend the time with you so I get penalized for teaching so uh, and it does it used to be I can send people with blood pressure and obesity and bad knees to a dietitian can't do that anymore can't even send somebody with borderline diabetes to a dietitian you have to wait until you're a full-blown diabetic to get to a dietitian and have it covered so you're kinda on your own but that's just with regards to insurance if you're willing to seek out the right individuals and make the changes it's well worth any price you pay to go to a registered dietitian or somebody who is at least knowledgeable with how to make sustainable changes for you.